way this water would have rescinded. This also should tell George, by the way, many municipalities here in the state of Florida, where I'm born and raised, that you live in low-lying areas that maybe some of the, the storm drainage, some of this has got to be taken care of. But then again, George, a lot of this has to do with Mother Nature. If this was something that was unprecedented, I can't call a lot of people off guard. This is going to be a really interesting conversation over the months to come. Radio station WBOB in Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you uh, so much for taking time uh, on the line with us today. So again, uh, this storm uh, still pushing north. It could affect some nine other states with a great deal of rain and winds, Michael, that, that we even saw here in Atlanta picked up uh, really strong gusts throughout the day. Yeah, I'll have to get you to go check on my house, George. I have no idea what's going on there. Uh, we're still down here in Florida. You make a great point. Irma, of course, is no longer a hurricane, hasn't been for a while, but it is ending life with a bang in South Carolina, downtown Charleston facing widespread and dangerous flooding, and also tens of thousands of people without power in Savannah, Georgia, as some of the city's historic streets are now underwater. One official, though, says it's not as bad as she expected. We'll have that and much more when we come back right here on CNN. Being weaker, but it has left destruction and devastation in its wake. It is now a tropical depression, but is affecting at least nine U.S. states. There were three storm-related deaths in Georgia, and a man was killed by a large tree branch in South Carolina. Downtown Charleston, under a flash flood emergency, Irma flooded streets there, turning them into rivers. Got some time lapse to show you now, and you can see the water coming up to about knee level, but in other areas, the water was as high as around 10 feet or three meters or so. All right, uh, let's go now to George Howard standing by in Atlanta, Georgia, where it has been wet and windy, George. And remains wet and windy, a little less rain right now, but again, the rain comes and goes a lot worse earlier in the day. Uh, Atlanta and uh, this part of the, of the United States are uh, certainly feeling uh, this storm as it pushes uh, north. Talk about flooding, though. Uh, flooding in Savannah, Georgia. Flooding in Tybee Island and Chatham County, Georgia. That's where I spoke earlier with Catherine Glasby. She's the public information officer with Chatham County. And I asked her about the situation there uh, this night and through the next day or so. Are actually improving here. Uh, we, we've been out of the the weather for a while. Our uh, tide, while high tonight at a 9.2, was not a major tide. Um, even though we were kind of expecting a 10, it was much less. So that that helps us out a lot. We did receive um, a lot of, of flooding in our um, islands and coastal and low lying areas uh, from storm surge and heavy rains. And we did have some wind damage uh, as far as like blowing down. Um, branches and some trees have come down, power lines down, those types of things. Uh, but it, it certainly isn't as bad as, as we were expecting a couple days ago. Explain to us how the moon uh, would have played into this, this king tide. That was a big concern there. Uh, we did have an exceptionally high tide with the storm surge. Uh, we actually had a 4.7 um, foot surge. Uh, so that made at the Fort Pulaski gauge, uh, it was a 12.24 uh, today around 12.30. Uh, so that is exceptionally high. That that did cause a lot of problems out on Tybee Island and into Wilmington Island, Isla Hope, Burnside Island, those things that are our coastal areas. Catherine, so uh, there is a curfew in effect uh, this night, correct? Uh, explain to us, uh, you know, how long that curfew will remain in effect. And, you know, what do you tell residents, those who will want to come back into those uh, those neighborhoods, those communities, given that there is damage? Right. And we respect that everybody wants to get back in to look at their property. That's important. Um, but we do have a curfew in place um, from 11 a.m. or excuse me, 11 p.m. last night into 6 a.m. this morning. And the reason that we have done that is because we don't really want people moving around the county in the dark. We are still being affected by having power outages. Uh, we still have at least 70,000 residents that don't have power right now. Uh, Georgia Power is working on that for us, and they're, they're amazing and awesome. and have actually restored a lot of our power. But we do have dark areas. So there are trees down. There are lines down. We don't want anyone to get hurt. So we have asked everybody to stay put for the night. 
And as far as coming back into the county, we'll make announcements about that tomorrow. But again, we have to secure the county first. We need to make sure that everything is okay for people to come back. We need to inspect roads and bridges. We need to make sure that those power lines aren't in the road and, and people aren't gonna run over them. Uh, those types of things. So that's why we've asked everybody to stay put right now and we will get everybody back in as soon as we can. That was Catherine Glasby again uh, with Chatham County telling us about the situation there. I want to update our viewers around the world again about the world's busiest airport here in Atlanta, Georgia. We're getting this uh, regarding Delta Airlines that it canceled 1,100 flights on Monday. A lot of uh, travelers uh, in, a, in a bad state of affairs, so many cancellations, but again, looking to resume operations uh, in the next day or so. Uh, resuming operations slowly. This mainly due to the strong winds that cross that airport complex. But again, Delta Airlines on Monday canceling 1,100 flights uh, because of this storm. So Michael, again, a, a great impact when you think about how much uh, traffic uh, passes through the Atlanta airport and how many people, uh, for instance, in the Caribbean are looking to get back to the states. But until uh, these major airports uh, in Atlanta and in Florida get back to normal operations, in Atlanta and uh, knock-on effect all around the country really and indeed the world a lot of flights coming in from overseas George thanks so much Florida of course facing the daunting task of having now to recover from this monster storm earlier I spoke with Jack Styler the mayor of Fort Lauderdale and began by asking him what the priorities are for our, our part of the state, we've, we've got to obviously dry out a little bit. Uh, we've, we've got a fair amount of rain from a very, very uh, big and uh, bad and very, very broad storm. But um, we're, we're in a phase right now where we're dealing with uh, trying to complete our assessment. And we've actually now been out of the storm for about a full day. But um, our area being just a, a rather large urban area, you know, Greater Fort Lauderdale is almost 2 million people. We've uh, we just are in the process of finally our assessment in terms of power lines, street lights, um, a lot of sand that got moved across uh, onto the barrier island, and uh, a lot of trees that snapped. I, I, we actually were doing a tree assessment, and we had over 100 trees blocking roads at various places, and so it's. It's a significant storm, so whether we escape the brunt or not, we're, we're feeling the after effects. Yeah, clearing roads, I think, is, is described by a lot of people as uh, you know, a very obvious thing, but, but a real priority. If you don't have clear roads, you can't get emergency and assessment vehicles around, uh, just the basics of, of infrastructure. And also power, of course, uh, we were talking about before. It, uh, it could be weeks. It's going to be such a massive job. I think five million people still without power in, in, in this state. How long do you see the recovery being? Well, obviously, the fa it's phases of recovery because, you know, from a short-term standpoint, we, you know, we can clear the sand off the road. From a short-term standpoint, we can get the debris out of the road. Um, now you get into the longer-term things, and you've touched on one, and I, you're 100% correct, the, the power issue. We've got, uh, in Broward County, you know, hundreds of thousands lost power. Uh, we already had some people get their power restored. I was I was surprised. I'm getting calls throughout Fort Lauderdale of people since uh, this morning saying, you know, hey, I got my power back, or I get a text, you know, we got our power back. So uh, Florida Power and Light is apparently you know working around the clock, and we appreciate that to get the power back. But there's there are phases of recovery. If anybody tells you that you re 